So this is the uh, topic on duct excision. A lot of the nipple discharge stuff was already talked about. Um, so this is gonna be more technical and there's another video that I'll show. Um, some of these things we talked about, so uh, when you're doing your duct excision, when you go circumareolar around the nipple areolar complex, try not to go past 50% because of how the blood supply feeds the nipple areolar complex, trying to maintain perfusion of that area. I like to use methylene blue, um, but I like to dilute it because there are reports of like skin necrosis if you go like no dilution. So you can do 50% or even like 10% the, with the rest being supplemented by injectable saline. As long as you can highlight the duct, the path uh, with the blue color, it'll be fine. Um, lacrimal probes I use, and uh, you really, when you're doing a duct excision, you wanna kinda get a conical dissection. So the duct, whatever you're removing, if it's a papilloma or something like that, where the ducts kinda coalesce underneath the nipple area complex, within the breast tissue, you wanna kinda have it as a base of a pyramid and then kind of go more narrow as you get to the duct underneath. It's really important to try to remove the entire duct. You know, there's a question before, if you, if you leave an introductal papilloma behind or part of the duct behind, and it's symptomatic, it can uh, recur in terms of symptoms, not necessarily an like oncologic worry in terms of cancer, but it can recur in terms of symptoms. And then depending on the size, I just added, because there's 15 minutes allotted, I'll just talk a little bit about the oncoplastic rearrangement of, of how I do it. So this is a patient I had recently. Um, you can see she has a lot of calcified vessels. Unfortunately, she, she's very young, but she has a um, genetic kidney disease, so she's been on dialysis. A lot of calcified vessels, but also calcifications within the breast. You can see them here. Um, and then you can also see them within the nipple itself. So on, on this cranial, blown up cranial caudal view, the lateral aspect of the nipple itself had a lot of these calcifications. There was an associated mass over here, which was biopsied and was a papilloma, introductal papilloma, no atypia, but very symptomatic. So, uh, you know, she would be soiling her uh, bra, things like that. Um, interestingly, you know, a lot of patients who complain of nipple discharge, when they come to your office, they might not be able to, they might not have nipple discharge at that time. Uh, one of the tricks that was taught to me was if they, if you don't see them at, or if you don't see the nipple discharge at the time you first encounter them, you can have them wear like a pressure dressing, like just a four by four gauze with a little bit of paper tape or soft tape over the nipple as like an occlusive dressing, let the um, fluid build up and then see them, you know, three or four days later, have them do it like three to four days before your next visit and you might be able to identify the duct. Um, where it's coming from. This patient was very simple to find the duct because the duct was about like a, the, the duct of choice was about a millimeter um, or so. And so this is 